I want to thank you all for joining us today at Mission Critical Water, a virtual conference on the water challenges facing our planet. This conference brings together leaders from NGOs and academia, industry and government. They represent a broad range of sectors, including food and beverage, energy, IT, mobile technology, extraction, and my own industry, agriculture. We're all going to be taking different angles on the water picture today. My angle is growing more from less. That means producing enough to feed a growing world population with rising nutritional demands and doing it while safeguarding our environment. More yield with less land, less pollution, less soil erosion, less waste, less environmental damage, and key to it all, less water. That's called more crop per drop. Growing more from less is at the heart of what we do at Syngenta. We spend $1 billion every year on research and development. One fifth of our workforce is devoted to advancing the crop protection and biotech science that will enable farmers to boost yields while using fewer natural resources. The rest of us are dedicated to getting those technologies and solutions onto the farm and into the field. This is critical to conserving water. While the demands for water increase from industry and urbanization, the greatest need is in agriculture. Currently, agriculture uses an average 70% of available fresh water. Today, our virtual conference is devoted to Asia, where water shortage threatens the success of countries like China and India. Continuing to practice business as usual in Asia is not sustainable. At the same time, there is no region of the world in which our opportunities for progress are greater. Simply said, increasing water efficiency in agriculture will help close the gap between demand and availability while contributing to food security. Allow me to lay out the scope of our water challenge and how Asia fits into the global situation. Though the earth is covered with water, the fact is less than 1% of this is fresh water that can be economically accessed to meet our agriculture, hydration, sanitation, and other freshwater needs. Currently, we don't have affordable options to increase our access to fresh water. Some may consider desalination, but it's too expensive and useless to countries without access to oceans. As a result, some 80 countries already suffer from water shortages. More than 1.1 billion people lack access to safe water and 2.6 billion people lack access to basic sanitation. These numbers have the potential to get worse as the world population swells to predicted 9 billion people in 2050. Of this growth, 97% is projected to be in developing countries. Further stressing productivity and resources is a, is a changing climate. Already erratic monsoons and droughts are proving increasingly challenging to millions of Asian farmers. The demand for water has reached a critical tipping point in Asia. China and India, for instance, feed about one-third of the world's people, but together have access to less than 10% of the world's fresh water. Compounding the problem is poor water quality. For instance, 21% of China's surface water cannot be used in agriculture. And Southeast Asia is facing increasing water salinity in the Mekong Delta. Underground reservoirs of water, or aquifers, are also in trouble. They're being pumped out faster than they could be replenished by rain. Groundwater overdraft in China is taking place today at a rate of 25%. In India, 
overdraft is proceeding at a rate of 56%, it may soon reach the point that saline intrusion or pollution will leave its aquifers beyond recovery. As experts debate whether we have reached peak oil on this globe, there is no question we have reached peak water. You may associate water shortage with a lack of drinking water, but global water scarcity has a critical impact on food security. We will have to double food production by 2050 to achieve food security. But we will need to do this without doubling the amount of water we use. Of course, the vast majority of increased demand will take place in Asia, where populations are growing and living standards are rising. Already, almost one billion people suffer from chronic hunger, and of that, Asia is home to 65% of the world's hungry population. This is where agriculture can play a key role, providing we use our resources and knowledge to increase productivity to feed Asia's growing population within the limits of water availability. To address this challenge, we must begin by committing to put agricultural solutions into the hands of farmers. Then, and only then, will they be able to transform practices to be more sustainable. In Asia, the single most important issue we face is how to improve the way rice is grown. Rice has shaped the cultures, diets, and economies in the region for more than 10,000 years. For Asians, life without rice is simply unthinkable. It is the essence of survival. In much of Asia, poor people in both cities and rural areas spend half to three quarters of their incomes on rice. Not only is 90% of the world's rice grown and consumed here, but it is also the most water-intensive staple crop. Currently, 25 to 30% of the fresh water used around the world goes into growing rice. That's about 3,000 liters of water to produce one kilogram of Asian rice. But most of it is wasted in, planted, in planting and growing. Only half of the water used in rice farming is consumed by the plant. Decreasing crop loss post-harvest will also contribute to water efficiency. In 2007, for instance, 15% of the global average rice crop was lost after harvest. Not only does this decrease productivity, but also wastes water, energy, and other inputs. What if we could greatly reduce that waste? And what if we could grow more rice without increasing water use? I believe we can. At Syngenta, we're doing our part to help farmers in Asia overcome the water challenge. Our goal is to double rice production per drop of water in Asia by 2050. This may sound ambitious, but with a combination of technology, knowledge sharing, and partnerships, it is well within reach. Let me give you some examples of how each of these areas can contribute. Let's look at the first part of the solution, technology. We must ensure that farmers have access to better integrated solutions that include seed improvements, responsible crop protection methods, and modern irrigation. With the right technologies, farmers can close the yield gap, the difference between the best possible yields and those that farmers actually harvest in their fields. In Asia, this means some farmers are only getting 10 to 60% of their potential yields. Insecticides, for example, can save water by increasing crop yields. One product Vertaco insecticide has dramatically cut rice yield losses from insect pests in both Indonesia and Vietnam from 80% to 
to less than 10%. Other products can help plants use water more efficiently and survive periods of drought. Some crop enhancement products improve a plant's ability to manage water stress by expanding its root growth. Other technologies reduce the plant's loss of moisture through the surface of leaves. Modern herbicides also save water by decreasing the need to till fields while reducing water-consuming weeds. Keeping soil structure more intact allows for greater water retention and reduces surface runoff. Such technologies alone, however, are not enough. Farmers need knowledge sharing. And this is the second part of the solution. The success of such knowledge sharing depends on giving farmers specific information unique to their region, climate, soil and markets. Adoption of agronomic best practices can dramatically increase crop per drop. For instance, working with China's National Agrotech Extension Center, Syngenta has shown farmers how to increase yields while adopting more sustainable, less pesticide-intensive growing practices. In three years, farmers in the program were able to grow more, on average generating an additional $300 in yield per hectare. In other efforts to help farmers increase productivity and incomes, Syngenta works with local partners to boost farmers' access to information. One such program we have launched is in India, using mobile technology to give farmers timely and tailored agronomic advice, even in remote villages. This brings us to the third part of the solution, which is partnerships. To be most effective, technology and knowledge can best be shared through collaborations and partnerships. Such efforts will need to include stakeholders beyond agriculture, including information technology, mobile phones, the food chain and finance. Let me give you one partnership example. Syngenta has worked with the International Rice Research Institute to develop the simple, low-cost and easily implemented panny pipe. This is a picture of a panny pipe. Distributed free of charge, it allows rice farmers to monitor water levels and determine when it is necessary to irrigate, dramatically decreasing the need to flood fields. This means less water wasted, reduced irrigation costs, both to the farmer and also less fuel pumped to pump water. Public and private sectors can also work together to improve infrastructure and e increase market access for farmers. Syngenta is committed to investing in infrastructure, manufacturing plants and research stations throughout Asia. Yet private companies cannot support infrastructure alone. National and local authorities have a responsibility to ensure that farmers can reach markets affordably and efficiently. Governments, NGOs and the private sector can also work together to improve access to finance and insurance, which will help reduce the financial risks that farmers face every day. This will allow farmers to purchase quality seeds and supplies, even with volatile markets and unpredictable weather. Syngenta, for instance, is collaborating to develop a program for rice producers in Malaysia, which would ensure smaller quantities of crop protection products and seeds in case of crop loss due to weather. Such microinsurance offers should help farmers through difficult times until they can produce a successful harvest. Overall, we're working with governments, NGOs, international organizations, and other companies to develop solutions that will allow, allow farmers to grow more from less. That's about 400 collaborative agreements. 
most towards strengthening rural economies worldwide. Addressing the water challenge in Asia is not going to be easy. But the time to act is now. We don't have a choice if we want to double rice yields per unit of water and build a sustainable livelihood for more than 200 million rice farmers in Asia. After more than two decades of working at the intersection of science and agriculture, I'm confident that together we can do this. I have suggested a way forward using the right technologies, knowledge sharing programs and collaborations. Working together, I know we can achieve food security and save our water for future generations. I believe this conference can help ensure we reach that goal. Thank you very much.